Okay, so we've built a nice landing page, but I think currently it only looks good on small screens. If I expand the viewport here, you can see that quickly things start falling off. The image is taking the whole width, so is the text, and it becomes a little bit messy. So a quick fix here would be to add a max width container to our element here. So let's go max W for max width, and I'll go with MD here. And we also want to center our container and we can do that with MX auto, which will apply margin left and right auto. So now if I resize the viewport, you can see that we have our design nicely contained in the middle of the page, which looks good. But it feels like we're kind of wasting a lot of space here and there and we could do more interesting stuff with it. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at Tailwind's responsive variants and see how they help you build websites that look great at any screen size. So Tailwind CSS comes with five breakpoints out of the box and I've listed them in the sidebar here for reference. Here's what our design looks like at the small breakpoint, which is 640 pixels. That's the medium breakpoint at 768 pixels. The large breakpoint at 1024 pixels. Here's the extra large breakpoints at 1280 pixels. And you can see we've started zooming out a little bit on our preview here. And finally, the 2XL breakpoint at 1536 pixels. By default, these five breakpoints are defined as min width media queries, meaning that if you target the small breakpoint, it's gonna affect anything at 640 pixels or higher. Now, the really cool thing is how easy it is to use these media queries in Tailwind. To target a specific breakpoint, you can take any of the existing Tailwind utility classes and prefix it with the name of the breakpoints followed by a column. Let me show you. So for example, here we have a body element and it currently has a gray 100 background color defined. Say I want to make this background yellow at the small breakpoint and up. Well, I can write a class that starts with the name of this breakpoint, which is SM, and followed by column, and then use any utility that I want. So here I'll go BG, yellow, 300. Okay, so the background remains gray 100 here because we're below the small breakpoint. But if I expand the viewport here and we reach the 640 pixel breakpoint, you can see that it's now yellow and this yellow will remain all the way up to the biggest sizes. Okay, let's quickly change the color of the background on every breakpoint just for fun. So for the medium breakpoint, I'll go MD column and we'll go with BG green 300. For the large breakpoint, we'll go LG BG pink 300. For the XL breakpoint, we'll go XL BG blue 300. And finally, for the 2XL breakpoint, we'll go 2XL BG red 300. So let's take a look. We start at the gray 100 color. When we reach the small breakpoint at 640, it becomes yellow. Next, the medium breakpoint will be at 768 pixels and it's going to become green. We then hit the large breakpoint where it turns pink. And if we keep going towards the XL breakpoint, we have a blue background. And finally, we're going to have at 2XL, a red background. Now, remember these are mean width breakpoints. So if I wanted the background to be yellow from the small breakpoints all the way up to the end, just before the 2XL, I don't have to repeat background yellow 300 for all these colors for medium, large, and XL. I can just have small BG yellow 300 and then 2XL PG red 300, and our background will remain yellow all the way until we reach the 2XL breakpoints as it cascades down through the different breakpoints. There you go. So that's a quick intro to Tailwind's breakpoint and how the responsive variants work. Now, changing the background color at different breakpoints doesn't really do much for us here, so let's remove this and start implementing a responsive design. We're looking at our design here at exactly the small breakpoint, which is why the background is yellow. Let's remove these background color classes that we've used as a demo. And now try to see how we could improve this design at this specific breakpoint. We got a bit of extra space here, so I think we should make the max width container a little bit wider. So down here, I'll target a small breakpoint and I'll go with max W and this time we'll choose extra large. So now you can see we're using a little bit more of the space available. I think with this new layout, we can probably tweak the font sizes and the spacing a little bit. So let's start by increasing the space between the hero image and the logo. In my image here, I'll go at the end and target the small breakpoint once again. So we had MT6 by default and we're going to bump it up a little bit with MT8 on the small breakpoint. And while we're doing this, let's apply the same spacing for the heading. So SM MT8. 
Nice, we got a little bit more breathing room. Next, I think we can increase the font size of the heading here. So I also add a class of SM text and let's go with 4XL. Yeah, that looks great. But well, now the paragraph below looks a little bit too small. So let's make some changes here. So I'll also increase the margin top a little bit from MT2 to MT4. And let's try to make the text, maybe text XL would work. Yeah, I think that works nicely. Let's do some tweaks to the button as well. Once again, I'll increase the margin top from MT4 to MT6. And perhaps go from text small to on the small breakpoints, text base, which is the default font size, but because we had set it to text SM, we need to now reset it to text base. There's maybe one more thing we can change. I feel like the image here is a little bit too high now and it's pushing the content a little bit too low. So maybe we can go in our image up here and for the small breakpoint, we could add a height to this image. So let's go with H64. And yeah, I like this height, but now obviously the image is not taking the whole width. No problem, we can fix that with SM and W for width and full, which is going to extend it to 100%. And now the next obvious problem is the image is stretched horizontally, as you can see. So this is something we can take care of with the object fit property. So I'll go once again, small breakpoint, object, and I will go cover to set it to cover. So now our image is cropped in a way that always shows it at a proper aspect ratio. And I want this cropping to be always vertically centered. So I will add object center. And you might not see any difference here, but let me quickly make the height to 32 instead of uh, 64. And now look where the image is cropped right on the computer. If I change the cropping to object top, you can see that the cropping is now happening at the top of the image and same with bottom. So let's go back to center and set our height back to 64. Okay, I think we've done some nice improvements to this small breakpoint. Let's move to the next one, the medium breakpoint, and see what we can do. So here's what things look like at the medium breakpoint. I don't think we can do much here. We could show once again, expand the max width container and maybe make the font size bigger again, but I'm not sure that would add much value here. Let's just make the call that this is good as is for this breakpoint and move to the large breakpoint. So here's the large breakpoint. And <laughs> the first thing you notice is we don't have much space anymore for our code. So I'll switch to a different view. Okay, so now we're looking at the design at 1030 pixels, which is just above the extra large breakpoint. And we got plenty of space to look at it and also plenty of space to look at our code. I feel like at this breakpoint, we start to have finally enough space to do something a little bit more interesting. I'm thinking of some sort of split panel where on one side we have the image like this, and then on the other side we have the logo, the headline, the content, and the button. Now, this is a fairly big layout change, so that'll be interesting to see how we handle this with utility classes. One thing to consider is this image here in the current flow of the elements sits between the logo and the heading tag. But if we want to move it to its own panel on the side and the content on the other side, we're going to have to change that. I think that here, even if there would be other ways to implement that, it almost makes more sense to take a copy of this image in the flow. We can then decide to show the first image all the way to the large breakpoint and then hide it and do the opposite with the copy of the image. So in our code, this is the image in question. So I'll make a copy of that and I'll go all the way to the bottom. And basically we want another container here. So I'll create a div and copy the image in there. I'll remove all the classes on this image because they'll be different. So let's think of our split panel in two parts. This is the second part of the panel here with the image. And the first part is everything here from the start up here. We have the first part of the panel and then the second part of the panel. Before we set up the horizontal split, let's handle the show height of the images. So our first image here is showed by default and then we want to hide it on the large breakpoint. So I'll go LG hidden. If I go to the bottom to the other image, I want to do the opposite. I want it to be display none by default. So I'll go hidden and then on the large breakpoint, set it back to block. So let's have a look. We are above the large breakpoint here. So the bottom image shows, but not the top one, which is what we want. And when we pass the breakpoint, the opposite happens. Excellent, that's exactly what we want. So let's now split our layout in half. There's different ways we could do this. We could wrap both the panel sections in the flex container, or we could use CSS grid, which is what we're going to do here. So I need a parent container to set up the grid. We could do this directly on the body elements, but if the design changes and we don't want everything wrapped in the body directly, I'll just create a div for good measure. 
So I'll move that one down all the way to the bottom before the closing body tag. And now this new div will be defined as a grid container with the class grid. I'll also specify how many columns I want in my grid. So I'll go grid calls and let's go with two. And wow, look, it's taking shape nicely. Now it doesn't look great just yet, but we'll work on that. Notice that each of our container has taken one column each. If we had set the grid columns to be three, you can see our first container would have taken one third, two thirds, and the third for the next element that's not there yet. So to me, the first obvious thing here is the heading font size is too big for that layout. So let's go down here and we had text to Excel. And then at the small breakpoint, we went to text for Excel. And now on the large breakpoint, we're going to go to text three Excel in between. And yeah, that works much better. I also think that we can probably increase the spacing between the edge and the content here and also on top. So that happens up here where we had PX8 and PY12. And now we're going for LG PX12 and LG PY. And let's go with something fairly big. We're gonna go with 24. And yes, I really like that. Okay, so the next thing that doesn't feel right is this image is not filling the whole container here. I'm not talking about the whole height, but imagine that our section here on the left takes that space. We would want the image to occupy the same amount of vertical space, something like that. So maybe to make things a little bit more obvious, let me change the background color here on the body tag to 300. And then the grid container will have BG gray 100. Right, so now you can imagine this is a hero section and there would probably be a next section, like a feature section below. And we want the image to occupy all of this space. So let's go work on our image down there. And quickly before we do that, I think we can move this logic of show and hide on the div element itself because we want this whole block to show or hide depending on the screen size. Okay, so let's add a class here. And for our image to use the whole space of the panel, we're going to need to set its position to absolute. But since that would currently set it absolute to the entire page, we need to set the parent here to relative. We want the image to be absolutely positioned right on the edges. So we want top zero, but also right zero, bottom zero and left zero. And luckily there's a class that does all of these four values in set. So that will set the top, right, bottom and left properties to zero pixels. We need to do one more thing to make sure the image takes the whole space, set its width and height to 100%. So I'll go W full and H full. And yep, yeah, so our image is taking the whole space available now. But once again, we have this distortion problem, so we can fix it like we did before with object fit. So I'll go object cover and object center. So now if we change the screen size, the image is always taking the available space without distortion, which is great. But now when I go below the breakpoint, you notice that we have our two columns defined for all the breakpoints, which is definitely not what we want. So we need to go in our grid container up here and specify that the grid calls to should happen at the large breakpoint only. So here's below the large breakpoint and it should split in two columns when we pass the breakpoint. Excellent. There's one final thing I want to change for this breakpoint. This section here, the content of the left panel, is still within a max width container that we had set at the small breakpoint. If we look at this element up here, we have at the small breakpoint a max width of extra large. And we kind of want to undo that at the large breakpoint. So I'll go LG max width and I can go with max width full, which is 100%. So there's no max width limitation. Right, so now the max width container is gone, but it has exposed a little issue with the headline here where there's this weird line break after one word of the new color. If we look at smaller breakpoints, the text always wraps nicely on two lines and it's a little bit more pleasant. And at some point at the 1144 mark, which is still within the large breakpoints, it starts breaking up. So I think we can fix this by introducing a line break element. I'll go down in my heading here and before the span element, I'll add a line break and I'll add a class on this element. And we don't want to force a line break before the large breakpoint. So we will set this element to hidden by default. And then on large breakpoint, we'll set it back to its original display property, which is inline. So let's have a look. If we go now through the breakpoints, when we hit the large breakpoint, it never presents the line break issue that we had before. All right, this is looking pretty good. Let's keep moving and look at the extra large breakpoint now. 
So here we are just past the extra large breakpoint and it looks good, but we can probably do a couple of things. First, we should change the font size once again as we can make it probably a little bit bigger here. So I'll go at the end here and for the XL breakpoint, we'll set the font size once again to text for XL. Yeah, that works nicely. Now I know we just removed the max width container on this content here and it looks good here at the start of the breakpoint, but if we start stretching to bigger values still within the XL breakpoint, it starts to feel a little bit stretched out. So we should implement a container. Now we don't want to set a max width to the panel itself, but to just the content within it. This is the whole panel container. So it sounds like we need yet another little wrapping div, which will contain the logo, hero image, heading tag, paragraph, and button. So for this container, we'll target the XL breakpoint, and let's go with the max width of extra large. Now, what I'd like to do is instead of having this content centered, especially when it gets bigger, I would like to have it right aligned against the image, not the text itself, but the whole block of content here. We set the margin left and right to auto, which is what centers this container. So here I can go for the Excel breakpoint and set the margin right to zero, which will undo this. So let's look at it. And when the viewport becomes bigger, the whole content block stays right aligned. Very nice. Okay, one more breakpoint left, the 2XL, and let's see if we can make a small adjustment for these bigger screens. So this is the 2XL breakpoint, and I thought something we could do is make the image take a little bit more of the space, maybe two-thirds or three-fifths of the viewport width, while still having enough space for the text content to sit nicely on the left. So up in our grid container here, on the large breakpoint, we had set two columns, and for the 2XL breakpoint, we are going to go with grid calls, and actually let's go with five. So this is our first grid child, and we want it for the 2XL breakpoint to span across two of these five columns. So I'll go call, span, and we'll go with two. So now you can see we have five columns and two are used by the first element and then one because we haven't defined the subsequent elements. So we'll go down in our second container, which is here. And for the 2XL breakpoint, we're going to go with call, span, three to make it span across three columns. And I think that this completes our responsive design. Let's go and look at all the different breakpoints starting from a small screen. So this was our original design simply stacked on top of each other. And at the small breakpoint, we used the additional space to make the font size bigger, increase the spacing, and also contain the image to a fixed height. Moving on, we thought that nothing really warranted changes on the medium breakpoint, so we left it as is. When we hit the large breakpoint at 1024 right here, we make a fairly radical change with a split panel with the content on the left and the image on the right. As we keep going, we eventually increase the font size of the heading at the extra large breakpoint. And at the two extra large breakpoint, we use the additional space to make the image take a little bit more presence and the text still fits nicely on the left. And that's it. We've built a completely custom responsive design and we're able to build all of this with only Tailwind utility classes coming out of the box. We've targeted specific breakpoints by using responsive variants and doing so was as easy as simply prefixing any Tailwind utility class with the name of the breakpoint in question. Responsive variants work with every single utility class in Tailwind, which means that you have total control on any small details at any screen size. 